Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to begin our advanced manufacturing panel the Italian way. We are um, very pleased to see you all here today, and we're looking forward to an exciting panel. We will, uh, this will include both uh, questions and discussion here, and then there will also be some time for the audience to ask questions as well. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to that. Um, to uh, to uh, introduce uh, the agenda very quickly, we'll have the panel discussion for about an hour, and then following that, there will be a network and reception, and this has been sponsored by the Italian Trade Agency. Could we please give them a round of applause? So I'll introduce myself first. My name is Mariner Merrill, and I'll be moderating the panel this evening. I am a researcher at the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory, I, uh, and I work there in reliability and durability, durability of materials, including both polymers and steels. Um, my connection with the uh, with, um, Italian industry is sort of interesting. For the last couple of years, I've been honored to work on the, uh, the Marine Corps' new amphibious combat vehicle. It's interesting, this is actually an Italian vehicle. It's the, uh, the Iveco Super AV, which the Marine Corps um, bought uh, through, through another company, BAE. They bought the design and then made some modifications for the U.S. needs. Uh, by doing this, they saved several hundred millions of dollars and, uh, and many years of development time by taking a proven technology from Italy. So it was fun to me when I heard about this panel, and I'm excited to be a participant on it. So, next. So I'm Giulio, Giulio Busolini. Uh, so I'm representing the National Cluster of Advanced Manufacture here in the U.S., but I was also the former Science and Technology Counselor at the Embassy of Italy. And so afterwards, I also will tell you what we have done with the cluster in the past years in order to support the science and technology cooperation between Italy and the US. So thanks a lot to the Italian Trade Commission to have organized this event today, tonight. Thank you. Okay, my name is uh, Paolo Califati. I'm the Innovation Vice President for a private group, uh, not only, also I am the responsible for the additive manufacturing division. Prima Industry is organized in three main divisions, Prima Power, Prima Electron, and Prima, Prima Additive. Our business is mainly uh, the everything regarding the sheet metal working machinery, laser for welding, additive, cutting, uh, we are very active also here in the USA because we have uh, two factories here, one in Minneapolis and the other one in Chico P, and then a very important branch office for us in uh, Chicago. Uh, my background, my background, I came from research to be honest. I have a lot of collaboration. Uh, I strongly believe in open innovation, uh, open profitable innovation, and uh, my wish is uh, open uh, some collaboration also here in terms of research and, and innovation. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Martin Kinsella. I'm the director of uh, business development for Camel, uh, the link to uh, the Italian trade agency. So thank you uh, very much for the invite. Very honored. From a Camel perspective, we're uh, actually a wholly owned organi uh, organization by Fiat Chrysler based in Turin, but we are here in the U.S. Uh, in southeast Michigan, we have approximately 1,500 employees and we do engineering, manufacturing, installation, etc., for uh, automation, but mainly automotive, uh, approximately 70%, and then other industries as well. The, very honored to be invited here this evening and looking forward to a very interesting panel and discussion with regards to the collaboration and potential collaborations between the US and the Italian agencies. Thank you. I'm Marco Petrolo from Politecnico di Torino, so uh, University, a technical university in northern Italy. I work in a research group with other six faculty members and some 15 grad students. Uh, we work on virtual testing and manufacturing of mainly composite structures. And we have our own code. We developed this code. It's a software that is available. And basically, our mission is to provide uh, capabilities that are not currently available in commercial codes, say Abacus, NASA, and so on, with higher accuracy and way less uh, computational cost. Good evening. I am Marco Rossoni. 
I'm a research fellow at the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Politecnico di Milano. I have been also in the early, in early this year, 2019, a visiting scholar at Georgia, Te Georgia Institute of Technology, Department of Mechanical Engineering. Uh, my current research topic is about design for additive manufacturing and especially my PhD thesis has been about spare part production by using additive manufacturing. Uh, other research activities, my research activity and also the research group where I am involved are virtual reality for industrial application, augmented reality for industrial application, reverse engineering and the development of knowledge-based application supporting the product and production system configuration. Thank you. It's the video, there, there's a video. Thanks. So, I'm, uh, this, is a, this is a very exciting panel, and, and I love the fact that it's focused on manufacturing. This is actually the first time that we've had uh, at iMickey here that we've had a, a foreign trade organization of any type that I'm aware of come and participate and sponsor part of our conference. And the reason is, and the, the reason that they chose manufacturing is because of the, the core technology that this is. And um, so, I, I'm just curious, how many people here are, are from Italy at some point? Eh? Great, great. So, so another question, how many people here currently have, or in the, the recent past, say two, three years, have had a, 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 some form of collaboration with an organization in Italy? Okay, a much, much smaller hand. And this, this is the point. This is why we're here. We're, we're here to talk about this. So let's start, guys. So I understand that Italy is the uh, second in Europe for manufacturing output. So tell us what, if you were to look two, three, four, five years in the future, what do you see as the best technologies, the ones that Italy's really going to be leading the world in, that all of us should be interested in knowing about? I think uh, in terms of the actual the, 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 uh, Italian flair and collaboration, I think the uh, additive manufacturing is a key area uh, in terms of the development for the future, where the it Italian research locally and both here in the US and in Italy is, is is making great strides. Then we have, let's say, the, uh, the automotive industry within the Italian uh, infrastructure and also here in the global basis is kind of a key area. The advert, you know, the, com the film there showed a number of Italian products in terms of its uh, uh, manufacturing base that are now, let's say, moving not only from an Italian manufacturing base but also, you know, to a global base. So the Italian footprint I think in terms of its uh, flair and, and collaboration and, and working together with other <laughs> industries and, and countries is really where it's moving forward. But in particular, I think in terms of additive manufacturing, those type of areas. Okay, very interesting. Paolo? Yeah, uh, ju just to say something, no? uh, some statistics, more, some more statistics about the you know, Italian market. Uh, uh, I knew that Italy probably is the fifth country for uh, uh, industrial machines. You know, that, uh, that is important because uh, the market is very huge, you know? Uh, this, because in my opinion, we, we have an expertise in this field that is very huge, you know? There is Coma here, also Prima Industria, and probably additive manufacturing will be one of the future technology in this field. Today, additive manufacturing, to be honest, is a, a service, a digital service is a, a small part of the digital transformation. And, uh, of course, this object is uh, leading you know, this transformation. So, uh, 
I, I, I was looking at before all the paper here, no? Uh, some papers talking about uh, laser ablation, uh, some, pa some other uh, talking about 3D printing. Uh, so it, it's always uh, very, very nice, no? To see all these technologies, all these, these attention, no? In this uh, new development. And in my opinion, uh, the future technology will be related to what we do today, but uh, really transformed by this digital revolution. And this is very important. Maybe just to add, uh, I mean, <laughs> when I was also a government official, I think the real major capability of Italy is the manufacture, the, 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 the capability to manufacture. So sometimes when you need also to produce small pieces or small parts, the, the manufacturing capability of Italy is really incredible. So also when you, I'm talking from the research point of view, if you need to build something <laughs> in a quick way and you need to rely to you know, companies that are able to customize and to build something for you in a quick way, Italy is becoming a very, very incredible actor. So the, the, the supply chain uh, is very distributed. So there are small and medium companies that are working very actively with the main, main contractors. And so um, now I'm putting the head of the national cluster of advanced manufacture. When we decide to build this uh, interaction between Italy and the US uh, on science and technology, the, the main idea was to show that there are this manufacturing capability that is available also to research community in order to build new, uh, define maybe potential new proof of concept and, and new demonstrators, also using the capability that Italian companies are having, uh, not only in Italy, but also in the US. So you, here you have an example of two major companies that are uh, have this capability in Italy, but also are successful here in the US. And so we start to, from there, and after I'm happy to describe maybe later on what we have been developed. So just about the, the challenging is a very broad uh, uh, capability that I think would be available for the research community. That's fascinating, thanks so much. And I'm gonna flip the question around a little bit. So uh, Marco, you mentioned that you went and saw the Boeing, uh, you visited Boeing this morning. So tell us a little bit, some of the technologies that you would see that are maybe here being developed in the US that seem very exciting that would be of great benefit to Italian companies? Well, uh, recently we have been cooperating with the University of Washington in Seattle and British Columbia in Canada, if it counts. And Canada counts, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the um, reason why we are cooperating with them is because they are very well involved in the manufacturing process of the 787 and the 777. In particular, they deal with the curing process. So they create, they define the recipe for curing those piece of structures. Uh, so the idea, the, uh, the reason why we are into this is to uh, um, provide, let's say, Mm, numerical models to improve this kind of process. And also the short range aim is to enter with machine learning. So something that is very interesting in this uh, uh, kind of activity is that we can provide, uh, we can put big data into the loop and um, allowing informed decision making on during the process. So if the process is going well, we can continue, otherwise our numerical model can give some uh, alert saying change the temperature, ten change the pressure and so on. So this is something that we are working on and uh, there is a strong cooperation with the North American uh, institutions. Fascinating, thanks so much for that example. I'm, I'm interested, how did that collaboration start? Because you're, you're a Polytechno uh, Polytechnico Torino, right? Yeah. Well, mm, basically two ways. First way was through this kind of events like IMEKE, so networking. So you attend the same session, you present your paper, they present their papers, and so you understand that there is plenty of room for cooperation, then you start to talk. It's not fast, it may take a few months or years to make this happen, but it happens. Other ways are through cooperating, 
projects. Basically, we work a lot with European projects. And the European projects, there is room to include American institutions, basically US or Canadian. Uh, so with the University of Washington, but also NASA and University of Michigan, we created this kind of cooperation through European funding, basically. Fascinating. So they had funding on their side for their part of the program, and then you had funding on, on your side for, for the right. development of these codes and, right. and predictive capabilities. Awesome. Great. Thanks. The, um, the, uh, so one of the, the best things about manufacturing, of course, is that manufacturing is both the beneficiary of and the instigator of research, that, uh, that research and manufacturing are, are integrally tied together. So um, I am a little curious, uh, from the industry side, like say Prima Industria, how do you, wh where do you get your research? You know, do you, you have some in-house research, you also collaborate with universities. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, uh, Mary, to be honest, uh, I work in, in Prima Industria since uh, 13 years ago, no? After uh, my PhD and then, uh, uh, I think that the Prima Industria is a kind of uh, Disneyland for the engineer, <laughs> because, <laughs> no, it's, it's true, eh? because uh, we have a lot of uh, research activities for the lesser sources, for instance, uh, till starting for the dye from the diodes, so from the semiconductor, <laughs> then you know. digital transformation, uh, and then additive manufacturing, new laser processes. Uh, no, and the point is that uh, uh, this could could be not done. I mean, uh, by ourselves. I mean, uh, we we need of a lot of uh, collaboration to do that, because uh, when I started. Uh, with uh, this uh, role of uh, innovation uh, manager, uh, I understood you know, very simply a graph, no? uh, the market grow and then the technology portfolio grow. And then it's very difficult today to grow in both terms. No? And many companies in the past who tried to do that failed, but failed, they closed. So <laughs> It's important to understand that the collaboration in this sense is very important. Because today we cannot renounce to have a research in new technologies, because it's the future. Uh, because a new technology means uh, ma more margin, no? But uh, the grow, the market grow is very important. And uh, for instance, the Italian traditions in this uh, game is very important, because uh, they can help us, no? In uh, making this network, in uh, looking for uh, uh, nice competence, no, to certify the competence uh, and then the collaboration that we can have uh, around the uh, USA. In Italy, uh, all the research activities we have in collaboration with the university, we have collaboration with the Polytechnic of Turin, with the Polytechnic of Milan, we funded the, the Competence Center, Industry 4.0 Competence Centers, together with them. The, it is a kind of a benchmark where you can go there, you can test uh, uh, and also our customer could test our technologies, uh, could certify uh, our technology in terms of application and so on. This is very important. And uh, also in USA, in my opinion, uh, this should be, no, I mean, uh, not improved, but uh, created, no? Uh, the collaboration with the university is very important, especially when you treat uh, new technology like additive manufacturing. Today, everybody thinks that uh, by additive is possible to do everything. Yes, that's true. But uh, not everything is profitable. So <laughs> we have to pay attention to that. Because uh, sometimes technology is dangerous, uh, especially for the small company. <laughs> that's an excellent point. Sometimes technology is dangerous. We have to watch that. So on the, um, uh, so additive manufacturing, huge field. I know that here in the uh, advanced manufacturing track, I, I can't remember how many sessions they had on additive manufacturing, and there were, there were several in other areas. Um, so uh, Marco, tell us a little bit about sort of your view of, of the future of additive manufacturing. You know, what, what, do, you, what do you see this, both, both there in Italy and here and, and in general? Okay, uh, so my field of expertise is more on design on for additive manufacturing, so my focus is more on product. But beside the advancement on the hardware side of the additive manufacturing in this case, but in general, all the manufacturing technologies I also want to put the attention on the development of the software side. So for me, it's very important 
from my point of view, it's very important the development of IT software that support the user by, of, by using those kind of machine, like for example, by using uh, big data. If you want to deal with big data, you need like dashboard that give you hint about the real meaning of data. So we have also to invest on this side of the advanced manufacturing technologies. And this is my point of view. So I, we have, as a research group, a couple of collaboration with universities in US. One is with Georgia Tech, where I was directly involved. And it has been about artificial intelligence or some kind of artificial intelligence for designing for additive manufacturing. Uh, another collaboration has been with Stanford University, uh, the School of Medicine, where we try to print prosthesis, so biomedical device, by using additive manufacturing. Uh, another uh, collaboration we had with University of Buffalo in five years ago, I think. And so this is my point. Awesome, thanks, those are, those are great examples. So um, I'm gonna ask one more question and then we'll have a question from the audience. So start thinking of a really good question. May, may oh, I add go something? Ahead. Just, uh, no, I really would like to um, pairing what Marco um, and the two Marcos <laughs> saying somehow. Oh, so, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I think after maybe we can ask also to the industry their point of view, but um, the cluster, so uh, just to uh, let you understand the different um, approach that the national cluster have in order to support research and to translation the research to the industries. When we start to open the dialogue with the US, we try to leverage the science to science dialogue that all the sciences have, you know, what you, as you described, in a more programmatic way. And we try to use the science technology agreement in order to identify the major priority where we would like to engage each other. So when we organized the first, uh, you know, in the framework of the science technology agreement with Italy and the US in November 2017, where also ICHE was part of the of the institution, uh, government uh, agencies involved. We decided to have uh, NSF, uh, DOE, NASA, and NIST together, and uh, identified from the Italian side, the Minister of Economic Development and the Minister of Research, start to, identify, and, and start to use the Italian uh, roadmap in advanced manufacture was developed by the cluster as a framework where we could start to start to build the dialogue. And we start to build the dialogue on the lower TRL approach, because if you're going on a higher TRL, we have a competitive component that could be critical for both, country, for both countries. And so we start to um, identify three major areas of interest, and uh, we approach, uh, we start to identify, we have a small um, um, you know, groups in the afternoon of, uh, after we present the, the roadmap, identified uh, within created uh, you know these small groups with a, a company that was part of the of the cluster that have operation in the U.S. Uh, a group of U.S. PIs and a group of Italian PIs, and from that we we make uh, three proposals to NSF in order to see if there is an interest from NSF to fund this kind of project, and one of those was successful. The one of those was successful, was able to raise $1 million, and uh, the Italian, let's say, company that was involved, that was the operation in the US, was Comao. And from there, we, we start the dialogue, okay? So wh what I would like to tell you, there are two ways to collaborate. One is uh, the science to science, but also try to use, that was a pilot, so now we are trying to see which are the success stories and what we're willing to gain back. But the idea is to really uh, build uh, more programmatic dialogue could be benefit all the scientific community on both sides of the country. So that is my, I mean, what I would like to add in the conversation, and I think maybe the other colleagues can, can say more. And an additional uh, component that I think we are trying to push as a cluster is the mobility of the researchers. So we are also um, participate, uh, we, we help somehow to identify a potential proposal within NSF and have mobility program of U.S. researchers, young researchers, 
in Italy for uh, 15, 20 days at postdoc level in order to understand our ecosystem and from there start to uh, build a potential joint collaboration with Intel in the US on the advanced manufacturer area. That is some very simple uh, you know, uh, tools that you, USPIs, I think in general terms, can use in order to collaborate with us. And on our side, we can start to match funding on the, uh, from our funding mechanism in order to collaborate in a more efficient way. Is somehow an asynchronous funding mechanism <laughs> because we start from one side and after we try to pairing, but I think it's, it's demonstrating that it's uh, working. So that is the additional element I would like to bring on the, on the conversation. Thank you. I was going to say, from a <clears throat> Khmer perspective, we've got a, you mentioned about collaboration and, and funding. So we've done many projects with uh, Milan and Polytechnic and Turin, where we've, uh, we, we see our responsibility, two things. One is to, to innovate and, and collaborate to innovate in terms of technology and advancement, but also to collaborate in terms of uh, two reasons. One is to move forward in terms of a company and an organization, but then secondly, to encourage the next generation of workforce. You know, we see it as our, our responsibility. I think all of us here in the audience, it's our responsibility to, to encourage the next generation into manufacturing and engineering. And you know, us as Kamau, you know, as, as an automation company, when you bring in uh, students who are maybe five, six, seven years old into a facility that's got 500 robots producing maybe a vehicle every 30, 40 seconds. They are, they're hooked in terms of manufacturing and engineering. And it's very important because we as, we as organizations, all of us here, have to develop the next generation and encourage them in. And I think working with the polytechnics, with the universities, with the high schools, is an absolute must, it's a critical. Not only for Kamau as an organization, but for the industry, because we have to you know, bring those new ideas, those new, uh, new thinking, et cetera, but also then to encourage them into our industry, because it's our uh, need, need for the future. Yeah, and, it's, and it's an exciting time, and it's, it's kind of then we do multi-country, uh, let's say programs, where we have maybe students from Italy uh, through the Kamau Master Program will then come to the US for several months. We'll put them working with, let's say, interns from the US to build that bond, to build that, that teamwork. And there's a global organization. We form those links at that age. And those links then will last a lifetime. And we, we see that as a very key uh, core competence within us as an organization to act on a global basis and, and make that connection. Fascinating. Marco. Did you, did you have a comment there? Um, yeah, basically, the cooperation with U.S. institutions for us is uh, fundamental because uh, aerospace industries and aerospace institutions in America are um, top-notch, let's say. And, but likely, we have positive feedback in a sense that um, for instance, when we put in the loop PhD students, grad students, the exchange is always, almost always, positive and uh, fruitful. So we really um, seek for this kind of cooperation because 99% of the case, it's uh, very productive. Let's say. Awesome, thanks. So we have a time. Uh, is there anyone in the audience that has a question? So on, I'll restate just briefly so in case those in the back couldn't hear, but that the Italian way to manufacturing has, has one of the, the strengths of it has been about beauty 
And therefore, you know, what, is, what, are, what are we doing to maintain or strengthen that focus on beauty uh, as an aspect of, uh, of manufacturing? Is that correct? It's a good question. I think there's been some already some good points here about, you know, that you can build anything with advanced manufacturing, with, with additive, for example, you said, but maybe it's not always beneficial, um, you know, or, or these issues of design. So how does this tie then into the next level of, of beauty? Uh, actually, at our department, there is a research group that worked with additive manufacturing for furniture, to build furniture, jewelry, and those kind of stuff. So it's kind of an example of uh, how additive manufacturing or advanced manufacturing bring beauty to, <laughs> to the world. I don't know how to say. Yes. I'm also <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, you're right. No, I received a couple uh, of requests from a jewelry or a yes. a shoes uh, maker or other, yes, for additive manufacturing machine to make very high customized uh, product. Of course, uh, if you look for uh, some uh, uh, shoes, uh, Italian shoes, uh, and made uh, Italian shoes, uh, you can see that uh, the cost of uh, these shoes is not something that you can uh, look for, <laughs> not just uh, no, from the shell. So <laughs> it's something different. Uh, yes, there is the attention, uh, in my opinion, on this kind of uh, things for sure, no? Uh, but today I think that in Italy we understood also that uh, industry is a very important part of our economy, no? for what we, we, we say. No? So uh, there are many things that we are doing at this moment, no? uh, new things. I think that uh, today we are just, uh, we are trying no? to collect everything together. No? And then uh, we are trying to promote no, our uh, innovation, in, uh, in in all, all possible terms, also beauty, I mean. No, uh, for sure with the, this competence center, with this, the incentives uh, for the industry 4.0, uh, with the funded programs. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, there, there, there are a lot of uh, potential synergy between uh, USA uh, innovation programs and the Italian ones in this, at this moment. Great, thanks. Uh, it's interesting that uh, you bring that up. I have an interesting, uh, um, I have a, a, a colleague that uh, that actually is an architect and moved to Italy. He's working with uh, Polytechnic Milan in uh, additive manufacturing of stretched fabrics. So they start with stretched fabrics and then print rigid polymers on them. And when the stretch is released, then obviously you get a self-forming uh, 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 mechanism. And they're making very, very large structures. And they're beautiful. It's for an architectural application. But it was, an interesting, it was interesting to me that, uh, that it did require both uh, a degree here and a degree in Italy to, to really, for him to really make that happen. And uh, there were some interesting things with the scale of the manufacturing that he was not able to do, I think, really anywhere else but, uh, but there. So that was cool. Um, did you want? Yeah. If I may add something on this. In composite structure, basically, OK, in Italy, there are automotive industries that are using composite structure for cars, still it's quite expensive, so you use it for just top level cars. But one of the issues to solve, to be solved in the next years, is to not only to make this cheaper, but also to solve problems like the superficial, um, uh, surf the, to improve the quality of the surface of the, uh, the part, of the automotive part, because right now if you do it in composite, the quality is not as metals. So f the beauty must enter this uh, concept as well in, in, in a sense. Excellent example, thanks. So I want to shift gears a little bit. I, and uh, when we were talking earlier, you mentioned um, the, these lighthouses or the, this, this lighthouse pr program. Do you mind just telling us a little bit about that and, and what you've seen? So I just uh, I tried to you know, say a few words uh, our manufacturer policy somehow. So the Ministry, of, uh, the Ministry of Research launched in 2012, I think I remember, the, the creation of uh, 12 national clusters. Uh, one of those was the mass manufacturer cluster. The advanced manufacturing cluster was the most uh, successful one because they were is mainly a public partner partnership at the national level, uh, collecting now there are more or less less than 300 members, 
um, let's say 70% are on companies and 30% are research members. Uh, there could be national labs or universities. And uh, within this 70 participation of company, this 70% is more or less small and medium companies. And when we are saying small and medium companies, they're really part of the major con uh, main contractors. So from there, um, the cluster, the main role was to develop this national uh, roadmap for manufacture that the government n need to you know, address for the future years and could be also a piece of the, our European, national, uh, European strategy of for advanced manufacture. From there, uh, the Ministry of, Econ of Economic Development took the major priorities and say, okay, we like what you've done and uh, let's uh, have specific uh, funding mechanism that could be negotiated directly with the companies in order to create these open factories that could be available to the local ecosystem and showcase which are the best uh, experiences in uh, digital transformation or different areas that might be interesting to, to the, to the, to the um, ecosystem that works in advanced manufacturing. And so from there, there was a funding out of more or less, I think, 150 million. I don't remember now, more or less. It would, no, maybe a little bit less, divided, divided in uh, four major factories that were able to develop this new uh, you know, approach and showcases to the, to, the, to the supply chain. And that is something that's been very successful. Uh, we had four of them at the moment. We are now having the pipeline other three or four. Uh, there will be an, an, another launch uh, um, phase of funding for the Ministry of Economic Development that was just finished two days ago. So we are having the pipeline for sure, the two or three in available. And um, those ones are complemented to another um, uh, line of uh, funding that is supporting the competence center that was described before. So there will be, there are now eight or seven competence center that are more like the national institute you have here. They're providing maybe less facilities, service facilities that are pairing also with the activity that the uh, lighthouse are doing. So the lighthouse is a way to showcase what the industry is able to do and is uh, open to the supply in order to learn together new uh, ways of uh, uh, advance the manufacturer concept within the, the you know, from, from the main contractor to the supply chain. But I think maybe a company could showcase better what I'm saying. Correct. Yes, yes, it's, uh, it's correct. Yes, it's important. No? The involvement of the company, the direct involvement of the company in this, uh, in this game is very important. Also because uh, uh, the point is that no? we have a, a, a very deep revolution that is uh, this industry 4.0, no? The digital trans transformation is very important revolution. If you think to the worker and to the company that has, uh, have to change no? their mind uh, to way to work, no? So uh, innovation, this term means, uh, for sure, uh, maturation of the innovation programs, first. Second uh, means uh, training, uh, all the training, uh, all uh, the... Uh, uh, support for reskill and uh, to have the, the right skills for the new technologies. Third, the point is the new business. Because many times, uh, as I, I told before, uh, the point is that if you grow with your market share, then uh, probably you have to look around for the new technology, for startup uh, participation, for new business, because uh, you cannot uh, put your uh, resources every, <laughs> everywhere, no? That's, that's important. Uh, the lighthouse uh, concept uh, and the competence center uh, are focused on these, these three points, no? That are the three pillars of the research and innovation programs. Uh, research, training, and education, and new business. So you can go there, you can test uh, your application, you can test uh, uh, the technology, the adoption of the technology or business case, uh, and then you can uh, go on. But uh, just some number about the big data and uh, about the new space economy, no? Because uh, today big data means that we have to pass from uh, the 4G to the 5G. What does it mean? 
it means that today we have uh, 3,000 satellites around the world. No? And uh, this number uh, will drastically grow. It seems that uh, in 2024, we will have uh, something like uh, 25,000 satellites around the world. 25,000. So we have a lot of private company that today are engaging uh, this uh, uh, race no? for the space economy. In the past, uh, the, there were just the public company, you know, public agency that uh, fostered this market. And the additive is very important for this market. No? It, it, it is very important for two reasons. First, because uh, in 2025, additive will be the third producer of big data for the traceability of uh, components and so on. Second, because uh, every time you launch the satellites into space, it's very expensive. The cost is about uh, 40,000 euro per kilo. So you have to customize these, uh, these components to be very light, this component should be very light, but robust, then uh, the point is that uh, the life cycle of this component should be three years at least. So it's very important. So as you can see that uh, there are some number, unbelievable number, no, driven by this revolution. And then there will be some uh, total new market for manufacturing and new technology. And this is very important, especially for the competence that you have to look around for the new competence and to reskill the people that are working at this moment in the company, in the traditional company. Fascinating, that's, uh, that, that's quite a success on the program. Uh, Martin, what are you gonna add? I was just gonna go back to the, the lighthouse, the, the, yeah, the, the, that activity. So as an Italian company based here in the US, similar to the lighthouse, we then um, formed the consortium and then work together with a number of organizations locally in Michigan, then to uh, bring the Lightweight Innovations for Tomorrow Institute, which is part of the Manufacturing USA banner. And as a Italian US company invested in that institute and invested in that as, a, as an organization. And then to, to close the loop in more recently, we've actually, thinking about big data and thinking about advanced manufacturing, we've now actually uh, relocated our digital team into the institute. So we don't, you know, from a multiple number of reasons to kind of bring that innovation, the collaboration, which we discussed earlier, to bring that ecosystem in within the, uh, in and around the institute with us as a, a company and with the member companies, the member organizations. And what we've seen is that's really done many, many uh, positive aspects to the actual process because we're, we're learning and growing from it. The Institute are learning and growing from it. And the local industries are now learning and growing from it. And we're actually now feeding that uh, positive activity back to Italy and saying in terms of investment in local uh, institutes and academia is, is, is again, to, to kind of reinforce it. It's absolutely must. That's fantastic. Can you give, uh, put you on the spot here, but can you give any, like a specific example of a specific technology or a specific company where there was the sort of the, the where the Lyft Institute really, you know, had a home run? Yeah, I mean, uh, multiple programs have been initiated over the uh, number of years. One was with regards to a particular project with light, uh, low distortion welding. So in the naval industry, Distortion within the welding process of naval ships, submarines, etc., is a massive issue. And what the collaboration did uh, as the actual program was then to review the current techniques and bring in other industries, for example, automotive, and how we do you know, various uh, body assemblies, and looking at those particular techniques in terms of geometry, product structure, product design, and try and reduce that distortion in terms of the actual process. And you can imagine putting together a naval ship, if you can reduce the distortion by five to 10%, the, the amount of uh, time cost is saved is significant. And what we've now found is that the Navy and the companies involved, ourselves and hunting, uh, Ingalls, et cetera, is really benefiting from that moving forward. Because now we're, we're 
being able to reduce the distortion, reduce the thickness of the material, which has now then enabled us to reduce the weight, the mass of the, the actual uh, the, the naval ship or the submarine, etc. Carry more ordnance, carry more material, carry more mass, and be more efficient in terms of moving through the, the sea, etc. And that's kind of really having a ripple effect now across. That's a great example. So. Out of curiosity, how many distinct entities, just guess, were involved in that particular project, Trulip? I mean, there's a lot in the in the consortium, but uh, in that particular project, maybe 30, 30 different companies and in, and organisations and institutes, etc. But the ripple effect of that particular project now has been is, is like a some people at Lyft refer to it as like an iceberg. You only see the top part in terms of the institute there in Detroit. But down below is a complete ecosystem of academia, institutes, various organizations, et cetera, and companies that maybe there could be four or 500 engineers working on that particular project. That's incredible. If 30 is the tip of the iceberg, uh, that, that's, it's pretty uh, awesome to, con to consider the whole thing. So thank you. Thanks for that example. The, um, so one, uh, this, this came up a little bit with this question about beauty. But if, if you had in very, you know, very few words, how would you define, when we say the Italian way to advance manufacturing, just you know, throw out something as an estimate. What, what is the Italian way? What, you know, we've had a couple, of, uh, a couple of comments already made, but just very quick. And uh, Marco, do you mind if we start with you? Something that's intrinsically Italian okay. way. I go back to the beauty topic. I do teaching assistant in fashion design school, and we also trying to bring some of the basics of additive manufacturing to the fashion designers. So one of the ways should be beauty. Great. Well, I propose something a bit different in a sense that we can see beauty also in the scientific history of Italy. Uh, there is a strong uh, um, school of physics and engineering that is based on very distinguished scientists of the past. So we try our best to keep this tradition going on and by uh, cooperating with countries like US, I think this can be getting just better and better. It, it must be rough to, to carry the torch of Leonardo da Vinci, for example. <laughs> <laughs> it's very tough. I'll give an example in terms of beauty because that was a very good question. You know, we actually produce a collaborative robot that can carry 170 kilograms, which is really off the scale. And the thing about beauty was very interesting because we produced the product, we had it so it functioned, etc. as a collaborative robot, very unique. But the time spent on the aesthetics of what it looked like and how it was branded, and the colours, I mean, it was like... No, no, we need to go to market. No, no, no. We need to look at the aesthetics and how it looked, et cetera. It was a very, very interesting project. The fact that uh, solving the problem was one scale, but then the aesthetics of how it looked and taking your point, the flair and the beauty, I mean, it, it's a robot. Okay, so it doesn't need to look beautiful or it doesn't need to look, you know, uh, have a particular technique or, a, or, or look, but it was a very important subject before we launched it to market about... You know, even down to you know, the, the color of the branding. Where was the branding positioned? How was it going to look when it was moving? It was very, very interesting. So it, it is something that Italy do very well because it could have just been unique color. That was interesting that you said that you actually take into consideration what does it look like even when it's moving. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, a, a, a robot, you know, it, it should look... Uh, graceful. It shouldn't look as if it's kind of stressed. It's, you, know, a, you know, when we put in a facility and it's, uh, and it's not moving, that's very bad. Because if it's not moving, it's not making money. And then the customer gets very upset. But when, it, when, uh, when you look at, uh, you know, we, we put, a, a, it's called an open gate, where we have maybe 18 robots work on a particular product. Simultaneously joining, could be riveting, welding, etc in 40 or 30 seconds, it is absolutely a thing of beauty. You see 18 robots that are, that are moving at very, very high speed within millimeters of each other every 30 or 40 seconds. 
personally, I could watch it for weeks. <laughs> and, and I think it is a thing of beauty because the aesthetics of how we do our facilities, uh, the, the, and again, go back to the point about manufacturing, uh, a facility now is, is as clean as this, this conference room, even cleaner. I mean, the actual, how it looks, you know, the, the presentation of the facility, now a lot of time is now spent lighting how where is the lighting where is it you know how is it going to light the product how the product moves to the facility very very important although it's a it's a small detail when you walk into a manufacturing facility now it's not like the people in you know think it is it's absolutely clean pristine it looks like it looks like a hospital you know we have facilities we've put in that are absolutely spent in terms of how they look is okay it's not as important as making the product but it is absolutely a key part of how the product looks and that's just the facility you know we, we do pay a, a great deal of attention and it doesn't cost anything in the scheme of things you know to make it look good if it's done in design you know, we do everything in the virtual world whether it you know it doesn't cost it's not a big cost driver into a, a finished product if it's done correctly. That's an excellent point. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, beauty is, is a very important part for us. Yes, we, we, we care about that. <laughs> we, we know. No? Uh, but we are in more than 80 countries, I think, like, like you know, that uh, countries around the world. And uh, not, not for everybody, this aspect is very important. Uh, I think to India, for instance. <laughs> or, no, they don't care about too much about that. No, the approach is different. Our approach is, is different, I think, no? I'm part of the board uh, of the Factory of the Future. It's a pa public private partnership uh, that uh, very important for the European Commission when they make the call for funding and so on, but also for, for uh, in a, some other board, European board, no? Uh, and the one of the first time I went there, no, to understand uh, how we can promote our uh, innovation in, uh, in those tables. Uh, I was surprised on the fact that uh, when uh, some Italian talk about quality, it's strange, but no, there are always uh, some German that say, oh, well, we are better, <laughs> no, and so on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's strange, no? And then I understood why usually customers prefer our products, our solution, than uh, some other products. I don't know. Uh, Julia before said that uh, we are more efficient. No, our approach is totally different. We are able, we are flexible. We are able to customize. We are able to put the customer and uh, his needs uh, at the center of our innovation programs, for instance. Uh, just one word. In my opinion, we are competitive. That means that uh, quality is good. Uh, that means that uh, we are ma much more flexible than the other, but more in general, we are more responsive uh, in terms of uh, customer needs. And then makes this uh, competitive, our company competitive, but also our customer competitive with respect to other solutions. This is my personal thing. That's incredible. Thank you. So I think that uh, unfortunately, we're, we're, we're our, our time is running out soon. Um, I would be very interested if we could one more time and, you know, just going down the row if we can, maybe we'll, we'll start with you, but uh, you know, give it 30 seconds, you know, we're going to keep it very short, but if there was, you know, sort of one last thing you wanted to make sure that everyone knew about collaborations with Italy, about technology in Italy, about the opportunities and the, and the, the, met the mechanisms, the ways to collaborate, anything like that, sort of one last thought. And uh, and we'll we'll let it sort of we'll we'll let it close with that. So we'll we'll start with you and yes. move down. I tried to f I mean pairing what he said about the beauty, but you know, just to give the last sentence. But um, somehow it's embedded in our culture. And so when you told tell us what is the particular component of culture in our manufacture, it's embedded. And so it's very sometimes difficult to describe it to you. I would like just to give you some numbers in terms of uh, science-technology collaboration between Italy and the US. We have more or less 800 uh, science-technology collaboration between universities. They should try to leverage, but try to remember that now uh, Italy is becoming the first destination from European, from US students that are willing to, uh, you know, embed it <laughs> and to learn this kind of uh, flavor. They promise that there are not so many, um, let's say, engineering or 
uh, schools that are able to benefit of this kind of uh, movement of uh, US uh, university that are also open their own campus in Italy, that are not benefit to collaborate directly with our ecosystem. And so my message is that try to use a different, let's say, mechanism that uh, could be provided at the government level, but also uh, to, to pairing as much you can the kind of collaboration that we are able to provide, to, to support uh, when you're willing to collaborate with our country. And the cluster could be one of the mechanisms that uh, have, is now trying to demonstrate that we are able to maybe build up a top-down collaboration supporting the uh, bottom-up approach that you are maybe uh, able to build uh, through this, uh, also these conferences. Thanks. 30 seconds. Uh, y yes, I, I agree. More in general with, uh, with Julia, no? also because we are part of the cluster. So. <laughs> I cannot say that, that uh, some other, some different point of view. No, I, I uh, for me is one of the first time I've been I've been here, no, especially with the Italian trade agency. No? And then I was quite surprised about the organization, about the network. Mm. Uh, today in Italy we have a, a very good ecosystem, especially for innovation programs, especially for uh, for automation. Uh, and all the, this, uh, in uh, this market. Uh, as a prima industria, we invested in, uh, in USA, no? because we have two factories here. We have uh, two very important R&D here for our business. That is uh, laser sources, that is the heart of our no? machine, of our machines, and then also the laser dealing and advanced the laser process uh, that we produce here and we research here in, uh, in USA, in Minneapolis. Uh, and for us, uh, USA is the, say, our second market. No? It means that uh, there is uh, some value in what we do and uh, especially in how we do that. No? That's, uh, that's important. Uh, I think that, uh, as I told before, uh, uh, we can be competitive. Uh, our approach is different. And then uh, the organization and all the network uh, built here is very important. It's very organized. That's why I think that uh, today there is some value in collaborating with Italian companies here. Great, thank you. So I'll, I'll give two examples. One in terms of competitiveness. We as an organization, we have to be competitive. Because if we're not competitive, then we, we will die. And we have to innovate and we have to remain competitive. And, and that's the way it should be. If we're not competitive, we shouldn't exist. That's the first thing. Second thing, I think it should be uh, highly praised to the Italian trade agency to come to such an event as this, such an, a, a, you know, a pristine, a prestigious event within the you know, American uh, organization as, a, as an agency to promote the collaborations between Italy and America. Because I think, as you mentioned earlier, and as the CEO said today, that yeah, this is this is different. This is a different approach by the by the organisation to kind of bring and highlight, you know, the opportunities that exist between the US and Italy. And I think it should be very well commended the fact that this sh should should be, and more than likely will be, the start of many of these type of uh, agency events where certain arenas that maybe were not looked at as opportunities for collaboration. Should now be looked at opportunities for collaboration across multi, yeah, multiple countries, etc. But this is, uh, yeah, for me personally, this uh, and as an organization, this has been a fantastic event because here we are, you know, at the ASME event and as Italy are promoting the Italian companies here in the US. So I think it's, it's very, very useful. Great, thanks, Marco. Well, in university, as you probably know, we are almost always starving for funding. <laughs> uh, so the cooperation is not always easy. But my experience in this year is that as soon as you have a good idea and you find out synergies between partners, maybe in the US, then somehow you succeed. It's a matter of perseverance, good luck, timing, but I'm quite positive on this. So I feel like I'm positive about these kind of activities and I do thank you for this kind of experience that I make it uh, very appreciated. 
Thank you very much. Excellent comment. Okay, Marco, make it good. I totally agree with him, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Thank you. We need money. And uh, actually, our way to spread our research here in the US are these kind of conferences. Uh, I'm very glad to be invited here at this event and this conference. Just this. Okay, thanks so much. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs>